It's funny, it all started somehow. It didn't all start here, but it started for me, um, my journey um, 10 years ago when I was working with Philip in his office. And it's really amazing to see how this small group of three, four, five people operating from Philip's basement has turned into this massive gathering of um, people who share similar ideas and inter interests. So um, it's really nice to be back. Um, that got me into ETH, where I pursued a, a PhD on uh, smart materials and architecture, um, 2010 at the Chair for Computer-Aided Architectural Design. Then 2015, I um, started, or I, I was doing a visiting professorship in digital crafting at the Braunschweig University of the Arts. Um, and since last year, I am in <coughs> Dessau at the Anhalt University, um, being professor for material and technology in design. OK, Dessau. Um, most of you probably um, have never heard of this city. M many of you might know this building. We're celebrating um, 100 years now. You're all invited to come visit us. It's a great place to be. It's a very culturally loaded um, environment. I teach um, materials and technology um, on various levels. So we work with very traditional materials, but we also engage in, in more advanced materials, smart materials, a lot of bio. Materials and I try to do this through a very playful experimental approach. So I run very um, Yeah experimental workshops um, Engaging the students in, in trying to understand what the materials want what they what they are how we can manipulate them and how we can actually curate their properties um, and This then very often leads to or at least in the past has led to very um, Yeah experimental smart material interactive installations prototypes um, sculptures this website has been mentioned a few times already. Um, I very much encourage you to have a look at it. It's, it's a network, that's the idea. It's a platform which basically collects projects that all share a similar interest in adaptive materiality, smart materiality, living matter, whatever. Um, of course, there's a lot of projects that I'm involved in um, on this platform, but there's also um, uh, a lot of other people who are contributing. Um, so yeah, if you have something that you think could fit, feel free to to send it to me, and I'm happy to share it. Um, there's also theoretical, essentially it's, it's, a, it's a continuation of my PhD research, research. so there's also a lot of um, theoretical, technical information on these materials, how they work, why they work like that, um, when they were invented, what they're currently used for, what their potential use in architecture could be. And possibly the most interesting part of this, I think at least for students, is um, tutorials on how you can actually self-make those materials um, basically in your kitchen. Um, and this ranges from yeah, piezoelectric crystals to aerogels to slime. Um, there's a lot there. Um, more recently, I've been working, I've started working, I've been collaborating with Audi. We continued this collaboration and we were looking into the future of mobility um, on a student level. So the stuff that we developed is not something that you're going to see in the cars um, next year, but um, it's still, I think it has an importance because we're trying to approach this from a very different angle. So if we look at mobility today, I assume that most of you own a car. Um, cars are privately owned, they're rather expensive, they produce a lot of traffic, they're dangerous, they're noisy, extreme pollution, and if you live in a city um, like I do, there's always, you, you never find a parking spot, which is really frustrating. Um, which is actually one of the main reasons I barely use my car in the city. Nevertheless, um, they're great because we, we enjoy driving. We enjoy using our cars. We are in control. We, we feel safe because of the vehicle, but also because we are in control. We are an active part of a larger system. We engage in that system. We have fun. We trust in it. We have a private space in our car, um, which we cherish. It's an in individual experience. And all this leads to, to freedom and independence. Um, if we look at the mobility of tomorrow, at least aspects of it. Um, cars will most likely be self-driving, they will be autonomous, um, they will be connected, they will share information, they will hopefully be clean by using different types of um, energy. There will hopefully also be less traffic since we are sharing them, so we are collectively using hubs of cars, and through this there will be more public space um, in urban environments. But of course, um, that is kind of strange and it's scary because we're actually we're losing control. We're not in charge anymore, which makes us feel insecure. It's alienating us. Um, there, there is a, a lack of personal identification with these um, objects. And it's a very passive experience and we are depending on this larger system. Um, so the simplest solution is to take all the 
positive aspects of the individual driving experience and simply put them or try to put them into the autonomous driving experience and through this create a new type of freedom. So this is the starting point of our work, um, trying to develop a driving experience which then becomes an emotional journey by allowing the users to identify themselves with the vehicle. So that's the hypothesis we had with this projects that we did with our students. Um, I'm going to show you three case studies now. After the past two years, um, they were done with groups of yeah, four to eight students uh, per group and ran over um, a time span of, let's say, two and a half months usually. So the first one, Concept Breathe, um, we were looking into, into developing uh, or rethinking the, the car seat, basically, the traditional car seat. Um, especially in, 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 res in respect to um, scenarios of autonomous driving when, when the vehicle will become something more than just a mere means of transportation, but actually turn into something like a friend, like a partner, like a companion that uh, exhibit aspects of living creatures. Um, so we parametrically designed these, these um, seat studies. Um, they, due to the complexity and, and, and um, the form, we um, then decided to 3D print this chair one-to-one. -one. So this is our massive 3D printer um, in Berlin, which printed this uh, object over a course of 10 days. And then we added um, active cushions. Um, also, uh, like the, the work of Vera, they're inflated. So they're silicon cushions. They, they can be inflated, deflated. And the idea is that depending on the particular driver, depending on their physiology, um, this chair then adapts to the person, but also to different driving situations. And I have a short video. started with yeah, drinking a lot of coffee, analyzing how, how car seats work today. It's super complex. Uh, of course, we didn't achieve that sort of, um, or we, that was not the goal, trying to achieve the complexity that car seats have today, but rather rethinking what they could be, um, especially when you, when you start thinking about having different types of usages depending on different types of driving situations. So if cars are self-driving, we're not not every, but we, we don't have to be facing frontwards anymore all the time. We can maybe turn around. There can be different activities in the car. Um, so yeah, we looked at nature for inspiration, um, then developed the um, parametric model. And parallel, one team of students was working on the, on the inflatables, um, on the electronics, on the material research, making these things work, um, connecting them with sensors. We had areas where we added uh, fabric, of course, in order to guarantee the, the necessary comfort if you actually sit on this structure. And these were third semester students. They actually had no experience in any of the stuff that we did. Um, they really had to work very hard. Okay, another project which we did, one minute, all right, which we did last year um, in Deso is, um, here we were thinking about, what about the, the middle console, the, the, the tray basically, where you put your, your coffee when you're driving, and this one group, they were um, thinking that, um, or they were inspired by, by um, underwater experiences, by coral reef, by algae, and they wanted to get that experience, that calm, that, that, that relaxation into the interior of the car. Um, so they were developing a structure, um, yeah, inspired by these uh, coral uh, organisms, basically. Um, 
It's also 3D printed, but it's printed from a, a filament that is actually made of algae. Um, and the idea is that on top of this filament, they would grow um, lichen, um, uh, which, which would then um, create oxygen in the interior of the car, and through this also Im improve the, um, uh, yeah, the, the air quality and the, the, the um, environment, the interior environment of the vehicle. And this one, Okura, um, here the idea of the group was to develop an interactive or a responsive and active surface. Um, so um, they made this um, table from fish scale like um, tiny actuators which would then, which were able to move and which on the one hand of course can um, transport information off the driving experience of the car towards the um, towards the driver, but also um, um, allow the driver to identify themselves with the environment by being able to, to make this anonymous object into something, or individualize it, basically. Um, and in addition to the movement, these tires are covered with thermochromic um, coatings, so they change, the temp uh, change their color when the temperature changes, which also should improve the, um, yeah, the indoor climate. So if the sun is shining, they turn white, and they don't affect so much sunlight anymore. Okay, and I'm going to conclude with the very last video. So this is not exactly only related to, or this is not related to the, to the car projects, but hopefully we're going to be able to implement this in the future. This is done together with Sina Mustafafi from TU Delft. Um, you've seen some of his work in an earlier presentation. And here we are looking into using bioplastics, um, making our own materials and combining that with robotic fabrication. Together with design faculty of the cell and architecture faculty, we are conducting a collaborative course titled Bioplastic Robotic Materialization. In which we are bringing designers and architects together. The interesting idea behind this project is not only that we're merging these disciplines, but also that we're employing cutting edge uh, production techniques. Then using parametric modeling or generative design methods that consider the developed production methods and the customized material, we design and robotically produce biodegradable lamps. So depending on how we want the lamp to look, we can um, create a material which has a particular transparency, which has a different color, which has a certain um, flexibility or stiffness. Beyond this interdisciplinary experience, which happens during this semester, we believe that we are preparing ourselves for today's and near future societal and environmental challenges. So far it has been great fun and I hope that this project is just the beginning of much more collaboration in between these two faculties here at the campus in Dessau at the Bauhaus. Okay, thank you. <laughs>